it's really helpful as it runs to be able to see what it's doing. And in this case, the number that we are watching carefully is the loss. So we have a value logger, which is just a convenient way to go through each iteration and pull out a particular value if we want to watch how it changes over time. And we'll create it, we'll specify, hey, every thousand iterations, show me and show me what's going on and make sure to uh, average the results over every thousand iterations. So we'll get one point every thousand on this plot, tracking our progress, seeing how our loss changes. We have specified a million training iterations. So if we let it run to completion, we'll end up with a little line plot that has a thousand points on it. Next, we can step through our training loop. We've chosen our number of iterations, in this case, a million. For each one of those, we can say, take our classifier, our structure, run the forward pass. Forward pass is the function that steps through this graph and runs every block, generates its output, and passes it as input to whatever blocks it's connected to, and steps all the way across the graph. Then we log the loss, whatever the loss value is when it gets to the end, we record that. And then we run the backward pass. Step backward through this directed acyclic graph, starting at the end, go all the way to the beginning, in our case, running backpropagation and updating all of those parameters as it goes. And then every time we pass, I, we have it set to every 20,000 iterations, every save interval, stop, make a copy of our model, strip out the training data block because it's kind of large. It has all 50,000 examples of digits loaded into it, 50,000 images. So we want to take those out and then save it as our model file name. And then we have that cached for use later. So in under 100 lines of code, you can see we imported all the things that we need from Cottonwood. We chose our key parameters. We created a structure and pulled all those blocks in, created them and named them. Then we connected them together into our structure, into our graph, and then ran them through their training iterations. So that there is the training loop. We can then run this at the command line or, or wherever you want, train.py, and it will take and train this model to perform as well as it possibly can on these, on this data.